Are you ready to build your personal brand this year? If you are a service-based business and you are an entrepreneur, then it is not a nice to have. It is a must have. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Seven key things to think about, seven key ways that you can start to build a profitable brand that gets you in front of the clients that you really want to be working with. Hey there, I'm Suze Chadwick, your bold business branding and mindset coach. And I work with female entrepreneurs to help you to build an epic brand, get out of your head, get out of your way so that you can pay yourself more. So let's dive into today's video. Now, before we get started, make sure that you subscribe and come and follow me over on Instagram as well so that we can get to know each other. The first thing when it comes to building your personal brand this year is to understand that we are in a content economy. Whether you like it or not, that is where we're at and that is where we're going. And so you've got to start thinking about how you are going to create that for yourself so that you can share your thought leadership, what it is that you can help your clients to do, and then obviously create the machine that helps you get it out there. So creating content has to be a core element of your business. I talk to my clients all the time about professional practices. It's about the core things that you do that help you grow your business. So for examples, Mondays are CEO days, Wednesdays and Thursdays are coaching days, there's a finance day, there's a content creation day, and we get those things done. By making sure that you're getting those things done, you know that your message is getting out there and you are reaching your audience. Obviously, getting your thought leadership out there so that people can learn to trust you, they know what you talk about, they understand how you can help them is so important. One of the things that I have learned when it comes to building a personal brand is that 30% of our customers come from my podcast. So I have been building my podcast for the last few years. And what happens is that people find me on the Brand Builders Lab podcast. They binge for a couple of weeks or a month, and then they message me on Instagram and they say, how can we work together? When you build a personal brand, you become a magnet to the clients who love what you talk about. They love who you are, how you talk about it, what you talk about, and they want to know more about how they can work with you. The second thing that I want to make sure that you are really thinking about is the value that you bring. And I'm not just talking about what value are you giving. I'm talking about you seeing the value in yourself. I think a lot of times people are like, who wants to hear me? Who wants to listen to me? Who wants to know what I've got to say? And at the end of the day, nobody is going to value you if you don't value yourself. So my question to you is, what is your value? What is it that you bring? What is it that you do so well and that you share and help your clients to do so well that of course they would want to come to you. And you being able to talk about the value that you bring as well as what your differentiator is, why are you the best person for them to be working with? Why are you the best person for them to come and find out this information from? And it doesn't have to always be overt. You don't have to be banging your own drum but just knowing what your value is and then working it into your content helps you build a really strong personal brand. If you never talk about the things that you've done and the wins that you've had and the successes that your clients have had, then how can people who have just found you know that that's what you do? One of the things that my clients love is that they know that I come from a sales background. I make selling fun. I make creating content fun. I help them to build a personal brand that attracts and magnetizes their ideal clients. I built a branding agency within a corporate and now I speak on stages. I've got my podcast. And so my clients know that I can pretty much help them to grow their brand as well as learn how to run a business really well so that they can pay themselves. And so my clients love that about me. And so I talk about it a lot as well. I talk about the experiences that I've had, what my clients have said, what they love about what I do and what their experience experience and outcomes and successes have been as well. So really think about what is your value and how can you, what I like to say, story sell it within your content as well so that they can get to know you and what you bring to the table. The third thing when it comes to building a really strong personal brand is for you to be able to share your story. And it's not just your story. It's actually all of the stories that you've had and the lessons that you want to share. We are built for story. 
Whenever somebody starts a story, it's almost like you just kind of settle in and you want to listen and you want to hear what's coming next. And so we love stories. And so you've really got to think about what is my story and how am I telling it? And then how am I continuing to tell short stories in different formats, whether it's on video, on your IG stories, in TikTok, LinkedIn, wherever it is that you are, how are you sharing great stories so that people want to come back and listen to the great stories that you tell? Just remember, it doesn't need to be epic. It doesn't need to be long and laborious. You can share short stories whenever you get the chance. People love story. It also really helps you to convey lessons and messages in a really easy way. One of the things as a speaker that I have learned over the years is to really take notice of the stories. When something happens, I'll write it down. And then when I come to speak, whether it's here on video or whether it's speaking at an event, then I think about what are the lessons that I want to share and then what are all the stories that I've got for that particular lesson. And it really helps people to remember you. When I think about people who I love and who I listen to, I always remember their stories because stories are memorable and we commit them to memory when they've had an impact on us. And so that makes you memorable if your stories are memorable too. So think about how you can start to categorize your stories into the different content pillars that maybe you share and into the different lessons that you want to teach your audience. And then that'll help them to remember those lessons and remember you. Number four is just decide that this is important. If you want to build a personal brand, it's not like you're going to say, yeah, I definitely want to build a personal brand. And then you don't make any time for it. If this is something that you want to do, you have to decide that you are going to do it. You have to decide with your time and with your actions that you are going to do it. You have to book it in the calendar. Think about what your core content or your masterpiece of content is going to be. And then you have to decide what that's going to look like. I think we underestimate the decision-making process. We can wish for a lot of things. I wish I could make a million dollars. I wish I could build my personal brand. I wish that I didn't have to work. (laughs) Whatever it is that you're wishing for, I just want you to know if you want to build a personal brand this year, then you have to sit down. You have to decide that it's going to be a priority. And then you have to decide how you're going to do it. And then decide whether you're going to invest in other people in your team helping you, whether you're going to block out a Monday or whatever day of the week to actually create that content and build up the following and engage with your audience. You might want to decide that you're going to pitch to be a speaker. You might decide to start a podcast. You have to decide if this is important, what am I going to do and how am I going to change what I have been doing in the past to now make sure that I'm showing up and I'm doing what I've said I'm going to do because I know that I have to start today. I should have actually started like yesterday, but I'm going to start today and I'm going to commit to this. And one of the key things that you can do when you have decided is to tell other people. So I started my YouTube channel many years ago, and then I got into my podcast and I kind of didn't do my YouTube channel much anymore. But now I'm like, okay, we definitely want to be focusing on this as our master content. We'll get our podcast episodes out of it. My VA is on board. We've hired somebody to do our video editing that can then cut it up. Like you've got to decide. Deciding is committing to the actions, the investment, and building what you need in order to make it happen. Which leads into number five when building a personal brand is that you do not have to do this on your own. You do not have to be the only person who is out there building your brand. Obviously decide to have your VA or a team member or an editor and get them on board, create a process so that it's easy for you to maintain and keep up with what's going on. But also then take a look at who else can you bring in and collaborate with in order to grow your personal brand. One of the things that we're doing is that my VA is creating a list of podcasts that we want to obviously be connecting with and I'm vetting them. I we're looking at what their podcasts are and then we're pitching to them as well, because then we can access other people's 
already established, amazing and engaged audiences. We're doubling down on the podcast. So we're doing two episodes a week instead of one. Why? Because we know that 30% or more of our paying clients come from the podcast. So we want to double our listenership. We want to increase the engagement there. We're obviously here on YouTube doing more videos so that we can reach our audience in an evergreen way. So really think about when it comes to who you're getting on board, who you're getting to support you, decide on what that's going to look like. So it could be collaborators, it could be your team, it could be your community. So one of the things that I have done for a very long time is that I say to my community when I'm in Instagram stories, I will say to them, I really want to speak at more events this year. I want to get on more podcasts. If there's an event that you know of and you think I'd be great in, then feel free to let me know or tag the person who organizes it so that we can connect. If there's a podcast you love and you think that we'd be great, let me know. So my community are out there letting me know. My community are out there working hard for me to help me build my personal brand. You do not have to do this alone, but you just have to decide on who you want to help you. And then you have to go and ask. One of the things my mother always taught me was ask for what you want. If you get a no, you just move on and you ask the next person or you decide on a different course of action. Number six, when building a personal brand is all about the omni channels. Yeah, the omni content where you're everywhere. So now that you've got your team, or your person helping you. It's about being smarter. Yeah. So working smarter, not harder. And I know so many people are talking about this because it's so important. We've got a business to run. We've got clients to service. So whilst yes, we want to build a personal brand. Yes. We want to create amazing content. We also don't want to be doing it 24 seven. And so by deciding and having the team and working out when you're going to be doing the work that's required to build your personal brand. The other thing you have to think about is your content strategy and distribution channels. So where are your audience? Who do you want to connect with? And then just taking a look at how the content, the master content, the one piece of really valuable, amazing content that you create how you are going to get that chopped up into lots of little pieces and distributed so that you can get on with supporting and working with your clients. So one of the things we want to do, as I said, is create the video, strip it for the podcast, then distribute it across our different platforms, create a newsletter about it as well so that we can send it out to our subscribers and then think, is there anywhere else that we want to put this content? We want to get it on a blog so that we're found for SEO. Maybe we want to put it on sites like Medium. Maybe we want to rewrite it and make it an article on LinkedIn. Maybe we want to edit and rewrite it and pitch it to entrepreneur.com or Savvy SME or whatever online publication. Like I really want you to think about how you squeeze the juice out of everything that you're doing to get more out of it and get more eyeballs and ears so that you can start to grow your personal brand and your audience of people who love what you do, who you are and how you show up. Which leads me into number seven, when it comes to building a powerful and profitable personal brand this year, be real, show up, be you. Even think about the quirks that you have that you can really emphasize so that you become memorable. Remember, stories make us memorable. Our thought leadership makes us memorable. But the things about you that you might think are a little odd, those are the things that people love. For me, I'm very colorful. I love a lot of art. I always wear bright clothing. I have a jungle in my office, <laughs> whatever it is. Just know that you can use what you've got to be memorable to your audience. So don't ever dull your light to try and fit in. Yeah, don't ever not be fully you just so that you think it's going to help you to connect with more people. Because at the end of the day, if you're not real, when you're creating your personal brand, when you're sharing what it is that you have, 
then when people actually meet you, it can be really jarring. And I've had this experience where somebody has been one way online and I'm like, wow, they're so amazing. It was so exciting to meet them. And then when I met them, it was really awkward because they were nothing like they were online. So when it comes to your personal brand, you have to make sure that you're just being you, whatever that is. And then at least the people who find you and love you and want to work with you, they want to work with you because of who you are, who you really are, not who they think you are. Because it can really break trust as well when somebody meets you and if you're not the real you, they're like, well, what else isn't quite right when it comes to you and what you said about yourself, who you are and what you do. So it's all part of the integrity of the way in which you're showing up and you're sharing what you have. Be you and use your quirks to be memorable as well. So those are seven key ways that you can really start to build your personal brand this year, start to show up, be everywhere without it taking up all the time and burning you out. And also just enjoy the ride. Have fun along the way. The more fun you have, the more fun your audience will have as well. So let me know any questions that you've got, any thoughts, anything that you're doing this year when it comes to building your personal brand that you want to share down in the comments, I would love to know. Make sure you come over and follow me at Suze Chadwick on Instagram, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.